okay. We'll give it a couple more minutes and then um, just for everyone to get like signed on and situated. Um, today we're gonna talk about more of like the broad band of um, haircutting. So if there's any questions you have about haircutting or um, any you'd like to add you can put it in the chat now so we can make sure me and Melanie get to it um and we'll just like I said give a few minutes for people to get on okay um so Today we're going to talk about haircutting. Um, last week we talked more about like the fine details when it comes to haircutting. Today is just going to be like more of kind of like the basics. Um, so like we touched on last week, um, some of this is kind of going to be like a little refresher from last week so we won't spend too much time on it. Um, but if there, like I said before, if there's any questions or anywhere you feel lost, the chat's always open so feel free to put whatever in there. Um, so I always like to, I think like the most important like basic foundation of doing a good haircut is doing a thorough consultation. Um, like we kind of touched on last week. Um, I think it's super important to have pictures to show, use like reference points to show them where the haircut's going to fall on them. Um, being totally honest, if you don't think that they have the right hair for this look, um, being able to suggest things that would be a better look for them. Um, in our salon, we, um, we usually do like an email consultation first. So when someone books with us, we send them a welcome email, just kind of introducing ourselves, especially if it's a new client, um, asking them for pictures then, because sometimes people don't think to look for pictures. So they don't always um, like, you know, have them ready. Um, so having all of those things sent to us so that we can kind of start coming up with a game plan in our head ahead of time so that we're just more prepared for the service in general. Um, but then like, you know, a picture of their current hair, their inspiration pictures, and already you would kind of be able to tell if it's going to work on them. If it's not, um, one of my favorite things to ask during a consultation is, um, about their lifestyle. Some people will show you pictures of haircuts that are very like styling orientated and, um, you know, they live a very like carefree lifestyle where they're not going to spend all that time, um, styling their hair, which is okay, but letting them know that it's not going to look like the picture if they don't style it. Yeah. Um, we also have, share yeah. Um, we also have iPads at our salon too. So like say if someone shows us a picture like is trying to explain something and we might not think that's the best thing for them like we can even go on like Pinterest or like find some pictures for them like that we think would be good and then we'll have um like we can just have them kind of like pick through that so that's why I like that we have that because I feel like it's kind of almost like something that we can prepare um and it helps give us like a little like tool too yeah for sure do you have um any of your like favorite go-to questions yeah, I like, um, before I even have them show me any pictures, I just have them point out like somewhere maybe that like feels heavy in their hair or something that is like bothering them and like something that they like. I know that we talked about that last time, but I just feel like those are like the most important things like for me because I don't want to take away like what they really like about their hair. And then obviously like we're problem solvers. So then we try to fix what they don't like about their hair, or, like what's bothering them. So I think before they even like show me anything, I like to ask them that. Yeah, that's a great question too. Just seeing what they love about their hair and what they don't like about their hair so that you can make sure that you are not cutting away the thing that they yeah. love the most about their hair. Or um, I think that question too kind of gives you like a key into what they're into, like what their style might be more like. Um, yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, and that too, like going off of that, um, yeah, just making sure that like you are, you're asking open-ended questions. Like you don't want to only ask yes or no questions. You want to try and come up with questions that are going to get them talking more um, just so you can get a better idea without like kind of putting the words in their mouth. 
Um, so after consultation, I like to just like think about like the tools I'm going to use. I like to think about like the very basics of hair cutting. Um, for example, I like to think about like, well, first off, me and Melanie both do this. Um, if it's a new client or even if it's not, and they're talking about um, like, you know, I absolutely love the haircut I had last time. If you could just do exactly what you did last time and you overly don't remember, or maybe they're new to you and, you know, their stylist had moved or something and they just really love their haircut, kind of being able to work through a haircut and like dissect it to see exactly what was done last time. Um, knowing like how, you know, finger it, angle and elevation and over directing like play in to hair cutting um, once you like understand those things you can pretty much do any haircut um, like we just took a class recently and like when we're training the newer girls at our salon we don't really like to go off of um, like teaching them just specific haircuts like it's not like they're going to come in today and learn a bob or they're going to come in today and learn um, like a stacked bob, like we don't really do that. It's more of like getting them to understand the way that the hair is just going to fall. Because once you can understand what all of those things do, you can do any haircut. Um, so the things that we're talking about are like elevation over directing finger angle, um, sectioning tension. Um, so when I have a new guest or you know, I'm trying to remember something I did on someone. I like to pull the hair out from the head at every different angle, um, just to see how maybe I held my fingers last time. Um, I like to check for pieces like around the front to see how they're laying. A super important question to ask is there when their last haircut was, um, because based on that, we can get a better idea of, you know, how much it's grown. We know hair grows about a half inch a month. So if they said, you know, it's been two months, we know it's probably an inch longer than they had originally had it. Um, and yeah, just making sure that you're like really dissecting that haircut so that you can see those things. Do you want to touch on that, Mel? Yeah, I feel like too, like the type of haircuts like I do, like I kind of do like the same techniques all the time too. So like what Amanda said, like if they came in like three months ago, kind of like knowing how much like their hair grew and then cutting like from that because again like clients don't really know like what a true meaning of like an inch is like there's gonna be like well I liked how short you cut it three months ago so kind of just like knowing like how much to take off um from like that maybe because again like clients don't really know like our technical terms so being able to like dissect and like just kind of like know how much like the hair grows I think is important and it makes us the professional too yeah and it'll just make them like you more. Um, it'll make them come back to you more because you did nail the haircut that they loved. Even if you weren't the last person to did it, to do it, you were able to see what was done last time and kind of like build off of that. Um, so like the things that I check for, I know I've already kind of said them, but I'll go in a little bit quicker. Is like, I check for elevation. Um, so I hold the hair out, you know, at different points of the head. Um, elevation is, you know, it, it can create weight lines. It's used for layering. Um, so I always check for that first. Um, I check to see if anything was maybe over-directed. So I grab, you know, from side to side and pull it opposite ways. Over-directing is a great way to save length, like around the face. Um, and then, you know, we actually, me and Melanie heard like this, um, we took a class recently and the guy that was teaching the class said, you know, when, when you're thinking about over-directing, you want to think like you're pulling away from what you're trying to say, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of like a cool little thing to think about. I've heard that before. And I always do think about it when I'm over-directing, um, just because like when you are pulling the hair in a million different directions, it can get confusing on like, you know, what you're going to cut off and what you're not. So like, if you're pulling it one way, you're saving length in that direction, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, I always think about the finger angle. It helps create depth in haircuts. Um, you know, for example, in a vertical sectioning, the finger angle will create the silhouette going up and down. And then if you're doing it horizontally, it creates movement away from the face. Um, so those are just like things I look for. Then after all of that, I 
decide about like wet versus dry haircutting. Um, I prefer to always start my haircuts wet. The only time I, you know, do, I go in dry first is if it's um, a corrective haircut. So if someone had gotten their hair cut somewhere else, or, you know, maybe they tried something themselves or they're just not like loving what they're having, like they don't like the way it lays, um, then I'll go in dry first. But I think it's important to start your haircuts wet um, because it just like helps give you exact lines. It'll help you create, especially if you're doing like a blunt haircut or a smooth haircut, the precision is just so much better when the hair is wet. Do you wanna touch on that, Mel? Yeah, I like doing ever like my base wet and then going in with like all of the like tiny detailing work dry just because I feel like you can see how everything's laying, but I feel like you do kind of like need like a good base before you go in and like do all of that. Otherwise, I kind of feel like then you're like kind of cutting forever if that kind of makes sense when it's dry. So I like to do um like the perimeter and then just like basic layering and then everything else I like to do when it's blown out because then you actually get to see how the hair lays I feel like Amanda you kind of do something similar too yeah I do um I do have one client too who like she likes her layers super um like short and kind of choppy not necessarily like a shag but more towards that direction than anything else and she comes in probably like once a month or once every six weeks just to get her layers trimmed up. Like she doesn't want the length taken up. She feels like her layers get like really heavy. So she'll come in probably like every six months and I cut her hair completely dry because it's all based on how it's falling. Um, she likes it the way she styles it. So I don't even style it. I don't get it wet. Like she comes in how she would wear it. And I work from there because I want to cut it in the natural fall of how she wears her hair so that it is how she loves it. Um, because sometimes, you know, in the past when I have like wet her down and blow dried it, like I don't blow dry or style her hair the exact same way she does. So she might love it when she leaves the salon, but when she gets home and like does it herself, it's kind of like still heavy maybe in certain areas or just like isn't laying properly. Um, I agree with Melanie though. I also like dry cutting for um like detailed work and like refining my haircuts I think it's a great like it's pretty much my favorite way to like remove bulk um you can blend better if there's any weight lines they're easier to blend out um and like again like you want to see how the hair is laying it doesn't hair doesn't lay in it's like natural way when it's wet um but another thing when it comes to wet cutting and dry cutting, something super important for both of those things is sectioning and tension. Um, when the hair is wet, I prefer to use smaller sections because using too big of a section is going to take away from that precision and having those super straight lines. Working in smaller sections um, will just make your job easier in the end. And then tension too, kind of goes in, we talked, I know we touched on this last week, but um, tension, you know, is kind of based off of like their hair texture. So somebody that's curly and they always wear their hair curly, I don't ever use like really tight tension. Um, so asking those questions too are super important. Like how do you style your hair? Do you, are you a wash and go kind of a person? Do you take the time to blow it out? Because if you cut their hair with a lot of tension and these really tiny sections and you blow it out and you do all the things to blend it and make sure it looks great. And then they never wear their hair straight like that again. It's not going to look the same curly. So kind of like keeping that in mind. Um, yeah, when the hair is, yeah. Um, when the hair is dry, I use like minimal tension. Um, and I like to use like the wider end of my comb. Uh, I also do bigger sections when the hair is dry, just because it's dry and it doesn't I'm not doing that like small precision work. This is more just like refining and detailing. So like, I don't need to take the skinniest little sections um, to get that same effect. Um, do you want to touch on any of that, Melanie? Yeah, I feel like it depends um, for every person kind of too, like how much tension and then like um, kind of how you're cutting too. Because I feel like, again, like some people like really blunt ends or like more of a blunt cut and like some people like softness so I feel like that goes into the consultation and I feel like it's almost kind of good to like kind of explain 
what you're doing. Like I'm doing this because you like this. I feel like clients kind of like that more, just like telling them, oh, I'm doing this. And like, not kind of like asking them like, oh, would you rather have this? Like, I feel like going over all of that in the consultation and kind of just like reiterating it as like you're doing that. Yeah. I'm glad that you said that. I feel like sometimes um, I hear like around the salon, people asking questions like, would you prefer this or this? Um, do you like your layers to look this way or this way? I don't think you should be asking those questions no. necessarily. I think that you should already have an idea of um, what they like and what they don't like based on the consultation and the photos that they showed you. I feel like if you're still asking those questions later on into the haircut, then you're not doing your consultation Yeah, you didn't properly. do that properly. And like, I always like tell, like Patty's huge on this too. Like she has, like, she always tells us to like go to like a different salon and get like a service, like not even like a huge hair service, but like go anywhere and get like a service done. Like I know if I'm going anywhere, like to get anything else done, like I'm going there because like I trust the person and like I don't want to be like telling them like what I want. Like I'm going there because I trust the person. So like I don't really want to be like talking and like telling them like what I want past consultation because I feel like to me that kind of seems like you don't not necessarily that you don't know what you're doing, but I feel like it like if you already know what you're doing from the consultation, that kind of like shows that you're confident. So I feel like well, you're right. And back- it feels it does like create a confusion. Um, like if you felt like you're all on the same page after the consultation point and now your hair is wet and they've already started cutting and now they're asking more questions. I think it makes the client kind of second guess how things are going. I like I thought we were on the same page. Why are you asking again? Kind of a thing. Um, and they, a lot of the times, like you don't want to always ask them in like very technical terms because they don't know, like they don't know what over directing is, or they don't know what, you know, certain terms that we would know what that means like you have to keep it very simple almost explain it like you're explaining it to a child which I know sounds silly but they don't know the terms like we know them um so asking them questions in those terms is just going to create confusion and because a lot of the times people won't overly admit that they don't know what those things are because they don't want to like act like they don't know what they're talking about or if you're saying it with such a confidence like it comes off that it's common knowledge when like it's not to them Um, so then in that case, they might just agree to something, even though they don't like it. And then they kind of just don't like their haircut. Yeah. I, I, I feel like too, like they're going to you. We talked about this last time, like they're going to you because you're the professional. So I feel like when you're kind of like turning it back, like letting them kind of like take over the service, like that's not why they came to you. So I think just doing a thorough consultation and then kind of just using like your, like being the professional and like taking it like from there. Like right. Because like today too, like everybody finds each other on social media. Like I'm sure a good amount of your clients are either like referral or they found you on social media. Mm-hmm. And in both of those ways, they have seen your work, whether it's on one of their friends or a family member, or they were just on your page, they've seen like what you do and they like you based off of that. Um, so like, kind of like let your work speak for itself. Um, moving on. Another thing that is so important when it comes to hair cutting, and we touched a little bit on this last week as well, is body positioning. Um, It's super important that you're standing directly in front of your sections when you're cutting. Um, If you're kind of standing off to an angle or off to a side and you're cutting, you know, over, um, this has, this is like one of the main reasons that haircuts are uneven. Um, Think about body positioning for your client as well. Um, you know, you want to make sure that their legs are uncrossed. You want to make sure that their head is completely down. Um, this will just help avoid any problems on the client's haircut and then save you time from fixing it. I don't know if you've ever like done a haircut and then you dry it and there's like all these longer pieces on like those bottom layers Mm -hmm. or those bottom sections that's from the client, not looking down all the way. If they have their legs crossed. Um, that's like a huge reason for an uneven haircut, even if you're only like kind of cutting the front. So you want to just make sure they're sitting up straight with their head down and their legs uncrossed. Um, but for you, it's equally as important to, you know, make sure you're standing with your back straight, your neck straight. Um, you don't want to like lock your knees. A lot of hairstylists pass out from like having their knees locked and, you know, standing for so long. Um, you want to make sure that you're like evenly distributing your weight on each foot so that again, you're not, you know, standing on one side when you're, when you're standing with like all your weight on one side, on one hip, you're more prone to cut on an angle. 
So just making sure that you are standing properly and in the long run, it's going to save your body. Um, I know like, it's funny to think about now. Um, but like, you know, when you've been cutting hair for, I don't know, 30 years or something and say you always stood wrong, like your body is going to show. Um, so with that being said too, like, I'm pretty short, I'm only like five, one, five, two. Um, I, if I need the client to adjust themselves, I do ask, because I think that it's more important for me to stay comfortable, um, during a full haircut when I have to do eight of them in a day versus that the client being slightly uncomfortable for five minutes while I put a foil in a certain spot or I cut in a certain yeah. way. And I feel um, like clients like want to do that for you. Like, I feel like even if like, I'm like a, kind of moving them, like they'll like even do it like more, like I feel like right. they, they get it. So yeah, they want to be helpful. Um, but like in the long run, it's just going to like save your body. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? If you do, you can put it in the chat or like, feel free to like unmute yourself. Okay. If not, we're just going to go really quickly. Like I said, a lot of these things we touched on last week. So if you were unable to attend last week, um, all of these video sessions are recorded. Um, last week we talked about more like in detailed hair cutting. So where some of this is kind of just like a broad overview, there is, you know, the more in-depth version, um, which you can go back and watch at any time. And if you weren't here, you know, last week and you're watching the video and you have a question, feel free to post it in band. We're always open to answering questions that way. Um, even if it's not about like the current week's video. So lastly, um, I just want to touch a little bit on like styling after a haircut. I always try my best to style the haircut as close to the reference photo as possible um, so that they leave with the full effect of being happy with their haircut. Um, I always too try and carve out a little bit of time if possible at the end of my service to um, like educate my client on how to style it because they want to be happy with their hair and they want to be able to recreate the style at home. And a lot of people just like don't know how to do that. Um, so they'll probably go home and try and look up YouTube videos or watch TikTok or whatever, but you'll create a better relationship with your client and the client will be more prone to stay with you if you're the one showing them these things. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the biggest thing I hear too, like everyone's like, my hair always looks so good at the salon, but then I can't, it doesn't look the same. Like when I'm at home or like, I can't do it. And I think like, again, like what Amanda says, like if you literally block out like five or 10 minutes and just like show them like the one thing that they're like missing at home, I think that they'll like love you forever. Like, I feel yeah. like, like you do that with like a lot of like, just like your haircut clients would be like, oh, like you can do this to make like your curtain bangs, like, like lay different and like that yeah. not five minutes and like, now they know how to do their hair at home. Right. And like Melanie's saying, we literally carve out five or 10 minutes at the end of the service um, to try and do that. We both book an hour haircut usually. Um, so the last, you know, five, 10 minutes is kind of us showing them if they're not getting it right away, or you just don't have the time. I always, um, recommend my clients booking a blowout and I say, you know, book a blowout, come in. And like, then I have, you know, way more time to educate them on the styling. So like, if you're, you know, you're still struggling with the haircut, book a blowout and like, we can spend the whole time, like showing you how to do it. And sometimes mm -hmm. clients will take me up on that and do it because they do want it to look the same at home and they want to get better with it. Sometimes, you know, I even let them, like, I'll do a few curls and then I give them the iron to try and do one. So I can kind of see maybe like where they're going wrong. Um, seeing like, you know, what tools they have at home. If somebody like doesn't really know how to use a curling iron, cause it's just like really confusing to them. I try to show them and I always recommend practicing with it off first until you get like the motion of it. So you're not burning your hair. Um, but if they're like, super against it and they you know they have like a styling wand at home instead um I will try and use my wand to like recreate a look for them just to make it easier on them like you want them to be happy you want them to be able to easily recreate the style at home um and when it comes to the style too that's kind of knowing with like taking their hair into consideration on how to cut it so if you're like seeing like we kind of like what we kind of touched on a little in the beginning but like seeing 
their inspiration pictures of how it's styled and looking at their hair, that's when you're going to know like if this is possible, if they have too much or if they don't have enough hair and making recommendations off of that. Um, when I do have to like say, you know, like I don't think this is a great fit. Like I don't, like I don't think you have the right hair for this kind of a cut. During the styling part, I like to point out like the differences that I did. So like, you know, say they wanted like really short layers, but they kind of have like a thin perimeter. You don't want to like take it so short to where, you know, you create holes or gaps or anything like that. So maybe I'll explain that in the consultation and they won't overly understand what I'm talking about, but they trust me. So they're going to let me do it. When the hair is dry and I'm styling it, I like to point out like, okay, like, see, like you still do have some layering back here, especially when it's curled, you can see it like, and they always love that. They love how their hair looks because it's looking more like the photo without being an exact replica when you kind of already told them like they can't do exactly what they came in intending to do. Yeah. I feel like, again, like I don't really like asking like what they want during the haircut, but I feel like when you're styling it being like, Oh, like I like this is because I did this, like, how are you feeling about it? Like, I feel like it's even like, if you were kind of like unsure, like touching base more like at the end, like I think is kind of better than being like, like during the haircut like oh wait did you want those like short layer like I feel like it's just better to use your professional opinion than be like oh like how are you feeling about this like the thing that we changed I feel like that's almost better than doing that yeah and then um the very last thing that we talk about in a haircut service is rebooking um I always try to get my clients to rebook especially on a haircut service because haircuts are one of those things that just like kind of slip away from you Mm -hmm. um so they they have every intention on coming back in, you know, 10 weeks or 12 weeks or whatever, but time slips away. They forget, they can't believe it's already been that long. Um, and then they just like, don't go. So I always try and get someone to pre-book, um, you know, reassuring them that it's okay. If they need to change it, they can, but going over this during the consultation and especially at the end is how much time can go by before they're expected to come back in. So when someone shows me a really short haircut, a lot of the times they want like a pixie cut or something because they feel like it's more low maintenance, which may be true on their day-to-day, you know, styling journey or whatever, but they're going to be in the salon more often because that haircut, you know, they need to come in every four weeks to have it trimmed or it's just not going to look that way. So like making sure that is clear as well. Um, And then at the end of the haircut saying, you know, let's get you set up for six weeks from now so that, you know, you can maintain this look. I think that's yeah. another thing to recognizing um, when they're trying to grow something out or if they're trying to maintain it um, and when to come back for either one of those. Um, do you have anything else you want to add now? Yeah, I feel like the pre-booking um, thing is really important. And I feel like if someone is like kind of not willing to pre-book, maybe you can say like, so this haircut kind of requires like six weeks. Um, if you, and like, again, like I don't really do just like a lot of like haircuts. So this kind of goes more into like color and haircuts, like for me, but say if like that color or haircut would require like a six week rebooking, I would say like this would need this amount of time, but you are probably going to need more work on this if you decide to wait past then. So either you're going to have like a shorter appointment or we're going to have to do more if you decide to wait. So it's kind of like up to you. And I feel like when people like hear like the more like easier side of it, then they're like more willing to book. So again, it's like, I guess that's kind of hard to explain for haircuts, but again, I I think it's an easier haircut if you go in that. Well, for sure. And especially when someone has like thicker hair too, like, you know, and they, they really like having it thinned out a little bit. Um, and they feel like it's not so puffy, like talking about the time again, too, like you can't come back here if you wait any longer, like you know, you're going to feel heavier again. Um, and just letting them know those things, because that's not something that they would think about on their own. Yeah. I feel like I, I don't like pushing like a pre-book, but then it's like, okay, well, if you don't pre-book, then it's going to feel like, um, like Amanda said, like extra heavy or whatever. Like you don't have to, but it's, if you don't come in in six weeks, like A, B, and C, like these are the things that you're probably going to start feeling. Yeah. So recommending that and recommending products at home to help them as well. Um, we don't really sell any product in our salon. So um, we do it through a booking link. We have like a little card that has a QR code. Um, 
we can email them the exact link to their products. So sometimes we just say that at the end, like I'm going to send you um, an email with a link to the products that I used on you today. If you're interested, you can purchase them right there, whatever. Because people do want to recreate the look at home and using the things you use to help them do that. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything we've talked about today or um, anything they would like to add? I'll give like a couple minutes in case anyone changes their mind. Um, but if not, then we're going to wrap it up for today. Um, like I said a little bit earlier, the these videos are always recorded and posted later. Um, so if you were kind of like working while you were listening and like you missed something and need to go back or if you're not able you know, to make it onto a call, um, it's always there. And like I said again too, um, we are always open to answering questions in band. So even you know if it's a video from a couple of weeks ago and you still have a question about it, like feel free to post whenever. We're always available to answer questions. Okay, um, Mel, do you have anything else you wanna add? No, I think we covered everything between last week and this week. Okay, cool. All right, well, have a great rest of your day and we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.